Our next presentation is a pre-recorded one by Clara Grillo and her colleagues. And the talk is a multi-taxer approach to habitat connectivity modelling in the Terai Arc landscape of Nepal. Good morning to all. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the conference in Romania. Uh, it's a pity that I cannot be there, but here we are uh, to present a study that was performed uh, in Nepal using multi-taxa approach to identify potential movement corridors that cross an upgrading uh, road near Shitwan and National and Parsa National Parks. Um, as you can see from this picture. Uh, Nepal is still has a low road uh, density comparing with India and, and China. However, uh, at least 5,000 kilometers of highway are under construction and work has also begun on 1,000 kilometers of uh, railway. So these infrastructure projects will pass through the habitats of several endangered uh, species from tigers in the country's lowlands to snow leopards in its mountainous uh, region. Um, the construction of the new roads in a sh very short time in Nepal can be very harmful if no appropriate uh, mitigation measures will be uh, placed. Um, one example is this existing uh, road of two lanes that will be upgraded to four lanes to accommodate this high traffic uh, volume. Uh, this road that you can see here in red uh, of 100, more than 100 kilometers, pass through the north of Shitwan and Parsa National Park and cross part of the uh, Parsa National Park in the, uh, in the east. Um, this road is included in the Terai Arc landscape, which is of major significance not only for the Himalayan region, but entire, entire Asia in terms of hotspot of biodiversity in the world. So there is a strong evidence that metapopulation dynamics have been contributing to the tiger recovery and conservation in the Terai Arc uh, landscape. So by upgrading a highway, we can bisect populations and isolate them, which can increase the risk of local extinction in the medium uh, term. So this study was performed under the project that was funded by the Asian Development Bank and the main goal was to prioritize road segments for mitigation. So our framework addressed the following questions. Which species we should analyze? What should be the area of the study area? What data do we need to collect? And how to analyze, analyze the data? Um, so we choose to analyze four group of species, so multi-taxa focus, large mammals of conservation concern, ungulates that most are tiger prey, small medium-sized mammals and primates of conservation uh, concern, that is Terai Gray uh, uh, We defined a buffer of 30 kilometers around the target roads, uh, so you can see here the road and the buffer. Um, we used the, the data from the Tiger Survey in 2018 to run the habitat suitability models. Um, so it's the, the cameras that were placed in the Shitwan and Parsa National Parks. Then we run the connectivity models for each uh, species to identify potential movement corridors that can pass across uh, the road. Uh, in parallel, we placed camera trapping close to the, to the road for validation of these uh, uh, potential movement corridors that were identified in the models. Also, sign survey and road kill survey were used to validate these uh, models. So you can see here in the picture, in green, the, the cameras placed uh, in Shitwan and Parsa for the tiger survey, and yellow, the camera traps that we placed uh, close to, uh, to the road. So for the camera trapping, uh, we surveyed in the dry and the monsoon season for 20 consecutive days, um, and we placed uh, uh, close to the road 200 meters and a little bit far away 700 meters in, in, in average. 
So for the site survey, we use the transect method. So when we are visiting the camera traps, um, um, we are looking for tracks, cats and pellets and other sign of presence. Um, for the roadkill survey, we use motorbikes, um, surveyed five days per week over uh, a year. And uh, the species richness that we found uh, in the cameras close to the road were surprisingly very high. So here we show our best photos and species that we detected. So you can see like barking deer, blue ball, shital, gaul, uh, honey badger, uh, hyena, jacal, terai gran ligur, that is an uh, endangered species, large Indian civet, leopard, porcupine, resident monkey, uh, samar, sloth bear, uh, small Indian civet, uh, tiger, and yellow throated uh, martin. So, as an example, uh, we can uh, find these, all these species in one camera. It was very, very um, surprising. So um, he, we, well, we used uh, as I can, I, I told you, um, the NTNC Tiger National Survey. So we used the species with more data. So we used five species of the species of conservation concern, five species of ungulates, uh, one primate of conservation concern, and six species of small and medium-sized mammals to run the habitat suitability models with um, uh, uh, environmental variables like altitude, land use, soil, distance of major roads, cattle, building um, density and human population. And also we use CircuitScape to uh, analyze uh, the habitat connectivity models for all these uh, species. So, um, well, uh, I, we, cannot, we cannot show all the results, but we'll show the, the, the most important results for the, raw, the tiger. Uh, you can see that the darker uh, colors are the highest connectivity. So you can see in the Barandambar corridor, highest connectivity, and the Parsa uh, corridor that cross uh, the roads. Uh, the same for Rhino here in the Barandambar corridor and Parsa corridor. The Asian elephant also the same, so in these uh, two places. And for Terai Grey Langur, you can see that the highest connectivity is very far away from the road, but the second level of connectivity you can see in the Parsa uh, corridor and a little bit north. So for validation, uh, we have information on road kill records. So you can see in Barandabar corridor several road kill and also a road kill of tiger in the Parsa uh, corridor. For the small, medium-sized uh, mammals, the data are dispersed all over the, the roads. For, uh, using the camera trapping, you can see for the tiger, we detected tiger in the Barandambar corridor, mostly in the Parsa and a little bit north, and also in the north of Parsa and uh, Shitwan. For uh, the other uh, large mammals, you can see that uh, we detected also uh, here in Barandabar corridor, Parsa, and a little bit north. Uh, for the Terai Grey Langur, that is dark uh, green, uh, you can see mostly in the Parsa and in the north that we can we found also in the in the model, the high connectivity models. And um, for the science surveys, we detected rhino in Barandabar corridor and also sloth bear in the corridor, in the Parsa corridor. So we defined two rank uh, road segments in terms of priority. Um, we defined five data sets, so species of conservation concern without the tiger, the tiger, the ungulates, and uh, the langur and small medium sized uh, mammals. So we standardize data from the connectivity model, so between 0 and 1, and diversity of species between 0 and, and 1. And then we sum uh, these uh, estimates uh, and uh, estimate uh, the, the mean value uh, to rank to the road segments in terms of priority to define the places for mitigation and what type of uh, mitigation. So because we don't have time to show all results, we show for the large mammals. 
um, and we identified two big uh, block of uh, habitat of, of, uh, with high priority, so Bernambar corridor and the Parsa corridor, and also three blocks with high priority. Um, so the current science indicates that elevated sections are needed for tigers, elephants, and also for preserving vital ecosystem components and ensuring long-term population persistence of wide-ranging species and biodiversity. So flyovers, like we can see here in India, um, are optimal biodiversity safeguards already implemented uh, in India with very good uh, results. There is a high diversity of tiger individuals that use the flyovers, and it is the best option to avoid induced development um, settlements on the roadside and encroaching into uh, natural uh, habitats. So for the high priority block, we recommend open span uh, underpasses like we can see here in these pictures and it has been uh, building in another road in uh, Nepal. So to conclude, we have only have one chance to do this right. This road will be upgraded and uh, there will be no second chances to come back and correct uh, the errors. So our team is working right now with the Nepal government to discuss the costs and benefits of the recommendations and define the length of the mitigation to assure the maintenance of this biodiversity, even with the upgraded uh, road. Um, so thank you very much. I hope you're still enjoying the conference and I'm here for questions. Thank you very much. So I'm not sure what happens now, but I think Clara's online, hoping. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's. Yes. I'm here. Hey, there she is, Clara. Yay! Can you hear us, Clara? I'm here. Excellent. So, thank you for a great presentation. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we hear you. So, uh, I have a question. Uh, you, Hello. You, no, yes. we we can hear you, oh. Clara. Oh, okay, good. I'm here. We can see you as well. So, but she is not hearing us. Can you hear? So, so uh, I was wondering. You you said you used Circuitscape uh, to derive uh, connectivity maps, and I was curious. How did you quantify the different? Uh, you know, where you usually refer to friction uh, values. Uh, the the resistance, uh, what kind of habitats the focus species is uh, attracted to or, or so. How did you quantify those values? Well, I used the habitat suitability model as a, as a basis. Can you hear me? Uh, so uh, instead, we can use the, co the inversion of the habitat suitability that can be the resistance uh, layer. And then uh, we define like four classes of um, inactivity uh, and try to understand what were in the quartile, um, the upper quartile that we assume that is the highest uh, inactivity. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Clara. Any other questions? Nothing on the chat. A question. Hi, uh, just one simple and quick question, non-scientific one. Can you share with us the budget you had for this assessment, this study, and its entire duration? Well, uh, we started in um, uh, 2020, so when started the COVID pandemic. So there were some breaks. Uh, in fact, it was to be like two years, so it finished more or less. Uh, there was some delay, so we finished uh, in the middle of this uh, in June. Uh, but we are still working after the project on the budget because um, 
we recommend these mitigations, but the government uh, think it's very high, the, 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 the costs. So uh, we are um, working, not, not me directly, but because I'm not uh, expert, but uh, we are discussing um, the costs and the benefits right, right now. So I think, I believe the total budget, because it was a mixed team, so with um, people from uh, Canada, uh, me and the technicians uh, and uh, researchers from, from Nepal. So I think in total, if I'm not incorrect, is $400,000, um, I think. Okay, thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Clara. It's a pity you're, you can't be with us um, here, so we miss you. <laughs> but uh, we're giving you a big virtual hug from, uh, from here. A big hug to you, yes. and I hope uh, to you all, and I hope you enjoy a lot. I, I, I would love to visit Romania. Well, more than I of course. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, Clara. Okay, thank you.